Hi everyone! Today I wanted to talk about another one of my favorite books called Eugene Onyegin by Alexander Pushkin. This is a book that is pretty well known in Russia. I mean, it is Russian literature and surrounding countries, but not very well known in the US or in the West in general. And so I really want to tell everyone about it because I think a lot of people would like it. It's got a lot of the charm of Jane Austen and also has like the drama of the Bronte sisters, but it's still very much unique. It's its own story and it's one of my favorites. Like I said, it's probably my favorite book that I've ever read, <laughs> uh, which changes from year to year, but let's just, let's just say this is my favorite book for now. So what's it about? Um, it's about this, this girl named Tatiana Larina, and she lives in the country. She's upper middle class, I would say. Uh, this is 1820s Russia, where the upper class is mostly spoke French. And in fact, some of them, including Tatiana, don't know Russian very well, or even at all. And uh, back then you could still settle a problem with jewels. They were not illegal yet. And uh, so a duel does center very much in this story, but really it is about Tatiana, about someone who lives a very reclusive life and is very much a bookworm. She loves to read. And the only problem with that is she starts to think that life will be just like a book, that um, one day her Prince Charming will come and uh, basically sweep her off her feet. So, um, she has a sister named Olga, and Olga has a boyfriend named Lenski. And Lenski has a neighbor named Eugene Onyegin, who arrives in the neighborhood after his uncle dies, and he inherits his uncle's estate, moves into the house, and starts visiting this family, these two sisters and their, their mother. That's when Tatiana meets him and falls head over heels for him, because she sees in him uh, the Prince Charming she's been waiting for. Onyegin, on the other hand, is not at all what Tatiana sees him to be. He is, um, well, he used to be basically a playboy, and he's been in and out of relationships for a while, but right now he's pretty cynical, pretty jaded. He's a Byronic hero, uh, very proud and selfish, I would say but also realistic to the extent that he does not believe that he and Tatiana would be happy together. Even though he definitely has some feelings for her, he does not want to pursue a relationship because he thinks it's not going to turn out well for either of them. And he's probably right. But Tatiana doesn't know any of this. She's very, very naive, I would say. And, you know, she hopes that by confessing her feelings, he will feel the same way. And then she does something which nobody does back then, which is to write him a love letter, um, almost a marriage proposal, I would say, right out of the blue, and sends it off to him first thing in the morning. <laughs> so yeah, as you can imagine, this being the 1820s, things pretty much spiral out of control there. Uh, Onyegin gets very upset about all this, and it doesn't help that the neighborhood starts gossiping about them because people kind of notice that uh, they they could be a couple. And that really, really bothers Onyegin, and uh, he just takes it out on his friend, of all people, in a really negative way. And uh, yeah, things get pretty bad from there. I'm not going to give away the plot. I'm not going to give away the ending. I want you to read it and to come to those plot twists for yourself, but it definitely escalates from there. There is a lot of uh, drama. There's even a, a weird dream sequence that is really interesting, and the ending is spectacular. It is, it's kind of, uh, if you've read Jane Eyre, it's kind of like the the crisis point in Jane Eyre. So it's a lot like that. It's really well done and just a real, really a moving story. So unfortunately, I can't read Russian. I have to read translations. I just wanted to show you the translations I had and kind of talk through them briefly. This was the first one I read by James E. Phelan, 
and it's Oxford World Classics. I first read the copy that my college library had and really enjoyed this. I feel like it is a very sensitive, um, beautiful translation and really gets to the spirit of the story. There are a few modern words in it which I don't care for, uh, such as girlfriend, but overall this is still my favorite translation and I highly recommend it. I would also recommend uh, the Penguin Classics edition. It's got a really nice cover and as a translation it's it's really quite good. My second favorite for sure, but there are some rhymes in here that I thought were a little awkward. I mean there's there's always different ways to translate. This one includes a map which is really nice. It's a very nicely put together book, but yes there were some rhymes that I thought were kind of uh, perhaps not translated the most naturally to English readers, but yeah, this this is a nice copy. Um, most recently read this edition. This one is translated by Roger Clark, I think. Yes, there's some pictures in here too, which is kind of nice to have. So there's Pushkin. Some of his uh, relatives. Um, here's his wife. He actually fought a duel on behalf of his wife and that's how he died. So really a lot of the events that happened in Onyegin are semi-based on real life, which is pretty tragic. Um, this is the most, probably the most famous painting about the story and some manuscript here by Pushkin. So yeah, this is also a dual language version, so if you are a Russian reader or an aspiring Russian reader such as myself, um, <laughs> yeah right, uh, it's nice to have that though, so maybe someday. Uh, Charles Johnston, his translation is considered to be a gold standard for many. I personally didn't care for it that much. I didn't feel like it was very flattering to Tatiana. She seemed very emotional and impressionable in this version, which she is, but I think that the other books kind of show her character arc a little better. At least that was my impression of, of this one, but a lot of people like this translation best, so can't really go wrong with it, I guess. I also read uh, Henry Spaulding's translation, which you can find on Project Gutenberg. That one, I would say, was very, <laughs> very awkward. It has a lot of words that I wouldn't use in English just because they seem like they're straight out of a thesaurus. Um, but it is free, so there's that. I think there's also an audiobook by Stephen Fry, which I have not listened to, but I think that one might be free. Uh, check me on that, but um, that is another option for sure. Uh, as far as adaptations go, I have seen the 1999 movie with Liv Tyler and Ralph Fiennes, and I've seen at least one opera straight through, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But about the movie, the movie was, uh, so Liv Tyler was great as Tatiana. She was very, I mean, she, she seemed to really understand the role and be able to play that kind of scared, uh, young girl very well. But the production as a whole, to me, it felt too British. It just didn't seem to me like a Russian story. And Ralph Fiennes is a bit too old to play on Yegan. He was fine, but I really don't feel like he was the best choice either. So kind of a mixed production. I, I would say it's not my favorite and I've only seen it once, but it is, it does have the benefit of being like the only English movie, really the only movie I'm aware of. So it's worth seeing if you're like a completionist. So there's that. Uh, my favorite adaptation I've seen so far is this opera. So this stars Mariusz Kvyechin as Onyegin, Anna Natrebko as Tatiana, and Pyotr Bekchala as 
Lenski, and they're all really great singers. I've seen them, these three tend to be in a lot of productions together, or used to be. Um, they're fantastic singers, fantastic actors, actresses. And, um, really, I do want to say that as far as understanding the source material and the characters, I mean, these three, they all three do a great job. You feel like they really have absorbed the roles to some extent, and they're just phenomenal. Um, I like them in pretty much anything they're in, but they're, they're really good in this one. Um... One thing to note about this production is they updated it to sort of late 1800s, which doesn't actually hurt this production. The costumes are amazing, the sets are amazing. Um, however, it's definitely a story of the early 1800s as opposed to the late 1800s. And uh, you kind of lose something of that zeitgeist when you update it to the late 1800s because Onyegin is supposed to be a fop, a dandy, the superfluous man, so to speak, um, the Byronic hero. He that That's a somebody that is so related to that post-Napoleonic era that it's really hard to picture him in a different era. So um, it, again, it doesn't really hurt this production, but that is one thing they definitely changed. I think they probably did that to make it more like a Dostoevsky novel, but it's not really comparable, so I'm not sure why they did that. Anyway, I still really love this. It's phenomenal, so try to try to watch this if you can find it. And um, yeah, that's all I've got for Onyegin. I'm running over time. Let me know if you've read it, if you've watched any of these adaptations, if you have a translation to recommend. And I'll probably link to a podcast that I did a couple years ago, which goes into it more in depth. And I have some posts on my blog I can link to as well. So check those out in the description. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.